with the local uh, legislators that I serve with, and uh, I don't think I need to recognize you, Paul. Obviously, you get full credit for all the great things you do in Montgomery. Well deserved, very proud of you, because you're an honorable man that serves well and very conservative. It's one of the best things you get to do in the legislature is develop great relationships, and Paul and I have one. Well done. Also, we serve on the House side, and you've got Corey Harbison here that represents Coleman County and Coleman. And then you got Randall Shedd. You have some great people that uh, represent you in Montgomery. The legislative process is a heck of a process. Just like in football, you have to have a process. And if you're going to be successful, you need to understand that. Uh, drove up here today. It was uh, in order to be with you. It was uh, about 300 miles. And one thing I have learned, we need more lanes on Highway 65. <laughs> Uh, and that's something we'll work to, we'll work to accomplish. I, I love this state. I love this country. I've served my country in uniform. And I believe that uh, and I'm running for office because I think we need a strong leader, somebody that has experience in, uh, in business, which I have, somebody that has served, as I've said, and also somebody, as I mentioned, that understands the legislative process. But more importantly, it's a unique opportunity in this special election for the people here and around the state, the Republicans of this state, to decide who will best represent them in the United States Senate. Not to disgrace government, not the Washington crowd. And so I hope y'all will be here. It's great to be here tonight with my fellow candidates for y'all to be able to decide who y'all think will, uh, will best represent y'all in this unique opportunity that's going to be available in a little over two weeks. I was born in Birmingham, just down the road, and uh, lived there until I was 11 years old. Most people think I'm just a South Alabama candidate, but was born in Jefferson County. Moved to Baldwin County when I was uh, 11 years old. They always say that you uh, move closer to where your wife is from, so my father had that distinction of moving to where my mother was from, which is Mobile. Uh, spent 45 years in Baldwin County, except for the four years I spent at the University of Alabama. There I received a business degree in general management, participated in the ROTC program, and received a commission as a second lieutenant upon graduation. Spent five years in the National Guard, uh, nine years in the individual uh, ready reserve. Uh, most important thing that happened there is I met my wife, Lynn, from Mobile, a great lady. Most best decision I made, maybe the hardest decision I've ever made about getting married until I decided to try to run for U.S. Senate. But we have three wonderful children. Uh, Reynolds, who's taught for three years and now in law school at Cumberland. My son, Lee, that's an engineer that works in Atlanta for Rockwell Automation. And my youngest daughter, Virginia, just graduated with a uh, degree in nursing. Uh, very proud of her. She's got a job in Washington, D.C., which is important because my wife is not necessarily thrilled about going to Washington, D.C., but I know she'll come to visit her youngest daughter, so I have that going for me. Uh, what I wanted to, uh, after, you know, I started a business in 1988. Uh, I've been in business for 30 years. It's important, I think, that we look at hiring a businessman for this U.S. Senate job. It's been 110 years since we've elected a businessman in the U.S. Senate. That must change. We need to understand businessmen get things done. They have to accomplish things. They have to be successful. They have to build relationships and have repeat business and have referrals. So I think it's extremely important that we understand and consider the fact that we have a businessman uh, in the U.S. Senate, and I think that's something we ought to give strong consideration to. Very happy with doing my business and raising my family. In 2007, on a business trip with a good friend of mine, uh, on his plane, we ran into a little problem with the, uh, with the electrical system, had a fire, uh, ended up crashing into the trees. I spent nine days in the hospital, uh, very blessed, realized how many wonderful friends I have. I felt like George Bailey, and during that time, I felt that God had a plan for me and made a decision that I thought I would run for the um, run for office. I didn't know what office that would be, and just a few about a month later, there was an opening in the state Senate seat. I entered that race, a special election. I didn't like this one with four competitors. Ended up making the runoff, getting elected to the Alabama State Senate, where I've served for 10 years. It's the last seven years, I've been budget chairman. Every budget that I've passed has been balanced. We've paid back over $700 million worth of debt. We've had to make tough decisions in the state of Alabama in order to do that. I fought and led the fight against Obamacare expansion in this state, passed tough immigration law in this state, passed drug testing for welfare, passed Medicaid fraud bills, 
So I have made the tough decisions and the tough votes and done the things in Alabama that we need to do in Washington. One of the things I'm most proud of is I've sponsored term limit legislation every year that I've been in the, in the state Senate. And I believe the only way to lead is by example. And so I had made the decision that I was not going to run again for the Alabama State Senate. And then amazingly, Donald Trump is elected president. What a great thing. What a great opportunity it is now for our country to have a businessman in office that can hopefully do what needs to be done to preserve uh, this republic. As a, as a lady asked Benjamin Franklin when he left the Constitutional Convention, what have you brought? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. And that's the challenge that we face that we face today. And so I have governed in the legislature and passed good bills and, and I think done the, have the kind of conservative record that we need to have. But what we need to do is we have to have understand and be a businessman that we have to understand how important the free enterprise system is to our success, to our quality of life, and to the opportunities that people have to realize their potential, to take care of themselves and their families. You know, it's the rising tide that lifts all boats. With innovation, with all of the things that develop to make our lives so much better. And we've seen so much of that in the last uh, few decades, but certainly none more important than air conditioning. And we always have to be careful with the federal government's concern about affecting that with some of their rules and, uh, and regulations. So it's very important that we keep the free enterprise system going. And what's so important is that we have so many regulations now. In 1965, we had 23,000 pages of regulation. Now we have 175,000 pages. So we have the regulations that are permitted, permit us headwinds. And being a small businessman, I understand about all the rules that you have to follow, all the permits you have to get, all the things you have to do in order to be in compliance. And so we need to try to remove those burdens because what's happening is, is that there's a very difficult for people to get out and be entrepreneurs and start businesses in this day and age. The health care bill, Obamacare, has put a tremendous burden on businesses. The number of individual small, the number of small firm business policies have gone from 20, excuse me, from 27,000 policies in 2007 to 16,000 policies today. Businesses are not getting started. They're not able to furnish their employees with insurance. And that's one of the major reasons we needed to repeal Obamacare today. But the first step, which I'm very disappointed in Senator McCain, that we did not get that vote so that that bill could go back to the House and go to conference and hopefully end up with a repeal or certainly a drastic result reduction in one of the most unaffordable, one of the worst bills that's ever been passed in the history of this country. We also have to look at Dodd-Frank. All the regulations that came about after 2007 with the banking system had difficulty just for small businesses to get loans. Heck, it's difficult for existing businesses to get loans. So we have to look at Dodd-Frank. And those are the kind of things that we have to do. And we need business people and people that understand the, the headwinds that are coming on into our economy. Because we have to get this economy growing. You know, our GDP is about 1.9%. We have deficits that are approaching a trillion dollars a year. Heck, it took until Ronald Reagan for this nation to get his first trillion in debt. We can't sustain it. So what we have to do is we have to get this economy growing to three or three and a half percent. So with good management and managing the money that the taxpayers share with us when they're successful, we can start to eliminate this deficit because it's totally unsustainable. It will undermine the quality of life of future generations. The other thing we have to have is a resurgence of family and faith and personal responsibility. Liberty requires responsibility. In fact, you're not truly free if you can't take care of yourself. And so we need a leader that can speak to that. It can be an optimist, and if I wasn't an optimist, I wouldn't be in politics. But somebody that can speak and expect that people will take advantage of the, of the opportunities that taxpayers are willing to give people with the education system. A people that will get the training, have the discipline and the structure. Maybe it's time to bring back some form of mandatory, mandatory service to this nation. So people can understand that they have to get up and go to work and take care of themselves. And we need a leader that will speak to that. Because without a good economy and opportunity, without a resurgence of, uh, of responsibility, this, this country, this republic, will not be able to survive with the same opportunities that we've had in the past. There's a unique opportunity, as I've said, on August 15th, to elect somebody that may not have the most money, and I've raised money, all, most of the money, almost all, all the money I've raised has been from Alabama, except a few college friends from, from uh, Georgia or Louisiana. Uh, haven't gotten money from the Washington crowd. I think it's important how you get elected. When I got elected to the state senate, I didn't take PAC money. As a strong conservative, it's still important not to sell out before you ever get elected, to have the independence, to make those, those tough decisions, because people are always looking for a fair advantage. 
in government. So it's very important you have the opportunity by turning out to really make a difference and select someone and elect someone more different than you normally would be able to on August 15th. So I appreciate your consideration of my record as a businessman for 30 years, as my having served in the military, having stayed true to my conservative principles and philosophy in the elected branch of government. And on August 15th, I very much appreciate your consideration and your vote. Uh, you can find out more about me at uh, tripforsenate.com, which is my website. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook at Trip for Senate. I hadn't always been big into technology. I like my privacy a lot, and you give up some of that when you serve in office. And lastly, I'm on Twitter, but we don't tweet after 6 p.m. <laughs> so God bless you all. Thank you all again for allowing me the opportunity to let you know better who I am. It would be an honor to serve you all in the United States Senate. God bless and have a great night. Appreciate it.